The land whispered, not to everyone, only those who listened. Our team, we listened. We were drawn here by the whispers, by the chilling tales of twisted trees and silent birds. We were healers, each gifted in our own way, here to mend the earth's wounds. Our leader Elias, a man with eyes as old as the mountains, called it a corruption, a sickness seeping through the land. We were here to purge it. Our journey took us deep into the Navajo Nation, a place where the veil between worlds felt thin. The air grew heavy, thick with the scent of pine and something ancient, something unsettling. The sun, usually a welcome companion, felt oppressive, its light struggling to penetrate the unnatural gloom of the forest. We moved as one, our steps cautious, our senses alert, each of us acutely aware of the weight of our mission. We were not just fighting for the land, we were fighting for our lives. The canyon yawned before us, a jagged scar on the Earth's skin. The air here felt different, colder, heavier. The whispers intensified, morphing into guttural chants that echoed off the canyon walls. The remnants of a fire smoldered in the center of a clearing, the air thick with the acrid smell of burnt offerings. Strange symbols etched into the canyon walls, pulsed with an eerie inner light. This place held power, a dark power that sent shivers down my spine. Hopi as Hopi, this place. It feels so wrong, my hand it's trembling, I can't control it. Hopi, the youngest of our group, shivered. His hand, usually steady with the Earth's energy, trembled. He was sensitive, his connection to the Earth stronger than any of ours. His fear was a tangible thing, a cold hand gripping my heart. We had to be careful here. This place was a festering wound, a focal point for something dark and hungry. The air crackled with unseen energy prickling my skin. I exchanged a worried look with Elias. Something was deeply wrong. Hopi's hand flew to his head, his eyes wide with panic. He cried out a high-pitched wail that echoed through the canyon. His normally vibrant aura flickered, a flame fighting against a suffocating darkness. His terror seeped into me, a cold dread that settled in the pit of my stomach. Older woman, as older woman. Elias, help him, he's in pain. Elias moved swiftly to his side, his weathered face etched with concern. He pressed his hand against Hopi's forehead, his brow furrowing as he sensed the unseen battle raging within his mind. Elias, as narrator, Damn it! I warned you all about the dangers of this place, about the entities that fed on fear and despair. It seems they're already upon us. Hopi whimpered, his body trembling uncontrollably. The entity was gaining ground, its tendrils of darkness wrapping around his mind, squeezing the light from his soul. A blood-curdling shriek ripped through the silence. Hopi's eyes, now vacant and black as night, stared through me. His body, once filled with life and laughter, moved with an unnatural grace, his limbs contorting at impossible angles. Something was controlling him, something evil. Two figures shrouded in darkness materialized from the shadows of the canyon wall, their eyes burning like hot coals fixed on Hopi. Skinwalkers, ancient evils that haunted these lands, wearing the skins of men, their hearts filled with malice. They moved with terrifying speed, their claws bared, snatching Hopi away before we could react. Their laughter, laced with malice, echoed in the canyon as they disappeared into the darkness, taking our friend and a part of our hope with them. We were left in stunned silence, the weight of our failure crushing us. We have to get him back. We have to fight. The weight of Hopi's absence pressed down on us, heavy and suffocating. We gathered around the remnants of the ritual fire, the flames reflecting in our grim faces. Despair threatened to consume us, but Elias, ever the stoic leader, rallied us back from the brink. They took him for a reason. They need his connection to the land, his power. We listened, clinging to his words as if they were a lifeline. We can track them. I can feel the remnants of their energy, the trail they left behind. Elias nodded, a glimmer of hope flickering in his eyes. Then we track, we find them, we get Hopi back. His words, though few, held the weight of a vow, a promise whispered into the darkness. We would become hunters tonight, stalking the shadows, our hearts set on vengeance and rescue. The trail led us deeper into the heart of the corrupted land, each step fraught with danger. The very air seemed to resist our progress, the whispers growing louder, more insistent. Fear threatened to cripple us, but we pushed forward, fueled by our determination to save Hopi. 
We moved as one, our senses heightened, our hearts pounding in unison. The stench of decay grew stronger, guiding us towards our destination. Then through the twisted branches of the corrupted forest, we saw it, a faint flickering light. Hope surged through me, a beacon in the oppressive darkness. We moved faster now, our pace urgent. The light led us to a cave hidden behind a veil of cascading water. The mouth of the cave pulsed with an unnatural energy, a sickly green light spilling out into the night. This was their lair, a place of power and evil. We had found them, now we had to take him back. 